Hey guys, before we jump into the thick of this video, I just wanted to go ahead and preface by saying two things. Uh, one, thank you so, so much, Curtis. I do so, so much appreciate uh, you giving me this opportunity and letting me interview you here. It was a blast to do, and you made it a lot easier than, you know, than it could have been. The second thing kind of ties into that. I was painfully nervous going into this. Curtis is actually one of my favorite composers of all time, and I'm such a fan of his work on Starbound that I was a little bit star starstruck. I'll be, be perfectly honest with you guys. Coming in a little hot, it was uh, a little bit shaky at first, I felt, but uh, I think we kind of very quickly snapped into it because Curtis was super cool and uh, did a good job kind of making it a little bit easier for me. So for that, I appreciate it. Thank you so much again. We'll go ahead and let the interview do the talking for now. This is Curtis Schweitzer. He composed Starbound, actually, which is one of my absolute favorite games of all time. And I found, specifically in Starbound, that that music managed to kind of evoke this, uh, this transformative experience, which is something that I don't really feel like any other game I've experienced has been able to do since Halo. It kind of, it's like this like layer, sort of, so to speak, I guess, which I always thought was really interesting. So your ability to do that, I always thought was incredible. Well, that's very kind of you to say. Um, yeah, I mean, I'm... Starbound needed to be pretty atmospheric, I would say, and it needed to be pretty big. Um, with the procedural generation in that game, there was just such a scope to it that I felt the score needed to be really big and expanse, sort of sprawling, I guess. So um, there's, there's a lot in there that I think, and it goes to a lot of different places just to sort of kind of fulfill that mandate of kind of trying. To, it, it can't be as big as the game, but it, sure. but it tries. <laughs> Well, so the thing that, that particularly about it is, and again, kind of comparing to Halo is, I feel like anytime I'm in an area in Halo and like kind of the music is playing in the background, um, it it always seems to kind of tell me how I'm feeling, even though I'm sort of already feeling that, it just kind of sort of, what, what's the word I'm looking for? Sound, like signal boosts that kind of feeling and just like amplifies it in this really, really interesting way that I just, I don't think other things do. Yeah, I mean, I think in both both games, I think the word that I would want to be used to describe the music, hopefully, would be uh, evocative. Yes. Um, something that kind of really uh, gives everything a sense of place and atmosphere, a real sense of space that it and it that it is a unique space. It's not just you know a random space. It's yeah, not a yeah. a boring space. It's a special space, right? Yeah, so sure. um, I think that's kind of a lot of what we go for um, and a lot of what I specifically have gone for and a lot of the stuff I've worked on. Um, what shows? Because I think that that really gives the music a chance to, to be integral to the game rather than just be kind of a, a icing, I guess. Right, right. So what actually brought you into the world of composition? Uh, you know, I've been doing it for pretty much my whole life ever since I kind of got into music. Um, I remember being a kid, uh, you know, being in piano lessons, uh, and it was just fun to come up with my own stuff, too. Um, maybe that's kind of indicative of a little bit of rebellion and not wanting to practice <laughs> the pieces that I was given. So maybe make up something that I enjoyed more or something. I don't know. But yeah, it's just kind of been always that's been something I did. Um, I think I started formally, like actually writing things down or working in, um, you know, like a DAW or something, uh, maybe like in high school, junior high, somewhere in there. So. Uh, how did you get started with gaming composition? Um, you know, I was really kind of aiming more for the film side of things at first. Um, even as far as like when I was like in college, I, I was kind of, I was trying to make friends with all the, the, film students um and and do as many films as possible right. but sort of coming out of there i realized that like i play a lot of games um i really like to write music it'd be kind of neat to you know combine those things and i remember one night just kind of posting some i think it was like on our games i can't remember where it was i posted wow. something like hey here's some of my music anybody want to Anybody like it? Who want? and I remember the Starbound people straight off just contacted me. They were like, "Hey, you want to work with us?" And I was like, "Yeah, I want to work with you." <laughs> <laughs> so, um, so that's kind of how that got started, and that was really basically my first game. So that's super cool. I actually yeah. I remember um, 
Tayuri, uh, specifically uh, over at Starbucks, uh, what is it, Chucklefish, right? Yeah, Chucklefish. Yes. Um, he's super, super responsive on social media and everything. I, I had an issue with the game where I couldn't access, like, the locker in the ship back in the day, and I tweeted him directly. I really wasn't expecting this, but he was like, oh, yeah, oh, cool, thanks for pointing that out. We, uh, we fix it, and this update is coming up. I'm like, oh. Okay, <laughs> that's cool. <laughs> that sounds like him. Yeah, yeah. I remember he he was he was really on it, and uh, I remember he. Uh, I think it was, like, item descriptions in the game. Like one night he was like posting in the dev IRC about how they needed all these like thousands upon thousands of item descriptions, and I think I like got up the next morning and he was like, "Yep, did them all." <laughs> That's funny, <laughs> or something like that. I can't remember that. That may that may that's a that's definitely my recollection of what happened, which right. is not always exactly what happened. So, <laughs> if someone else is ever listening to this and you were the person who was working on the dev team who actually did that, <laughs> I apologize. But that's how I remember it. So, what do you have a favorite track that you've personally produced? Um, I, you know, I don't think so. You know, I like a lot of st you know, I I try not to make stuff I don't like. Obviously, if I don't like it, I usually don't. You know share it with anyone but um yeah no, i know i think off of like uh maybe starbound maybe like a i guess fast immortal sons i really am pretty proud yeah, of um that was really good uh on airships i'm pretty proud of there's a there's an ambient track for the map music called aloft that i really like um that i was that i was actually wasn't meant for the game and then i kind of just had it sitting around and i was like why don't i just like ask him if this works and he and the dev david stark really liked it and put it in and i was like great <laughs> so um so yeah that that one um obviously i have a few favorites um on some right. upcoming projects <laughs> <laughs> i wonder what that, that i'm could excited be. <laughs> to share uh so um yeah i've got a I got got a bunch that i'm super excited for people to hear for that so oh, yeah the, the music in the two trailers that we've gotten so far was well, the, the two, I mean, I'm talking, uh, you know, the initial engine reveal. Actually, did you do the music for the engine reveal? So you're talking about the 2018 one? Correct, yes. Yeah, no, that was way before. I, I didn't get brought on board until February of 2019 or oh. January or something. So I, I actually don't know who did that. Um, I don't know if that Weird. was um, um, Kaz or who that was. Uh, oh, true. I didn't even think of that. Uh, he may have done it because I think he was still working. Uh, he was still at 343 at the time. So he may have put that one together. Or, you know, a lot of times trailers like that get done, you know, get, get sort of contracted out to... Um, specialty houses that put right. stuff together so could have been something like that i i really don't know okay well you know since we're kind of on the topic um did you do the music for the building a spartan video by any chance was that you uh no that was not okay, me. okay. um gotcha. i don't want to go into i know where that came from i don't i don't know what the <laughs> protocol good, is on, on uh on uh that but but uh <laughs> but yeah so i do know that they used some of my stuff for as reference for it but no i oh, did not sure. actually put that one together okay how does it feel to be doing music for halo how is that what's that like i try honestly not to think about how big halo is <laughs> a lot so that i can just kind of try to focus on you know making what i'm contributing as good as possible right but uh, yeah when i do get that chance to kind of step back it's pretty crazy so just, whoa <laughs> yeah it's like going from you know basically you know smaller smaller titles all the way up to just like whoa big as big as it gets so yeah it's, yeah it's been uh <laughs> like i said i, I sort of kind of there's a part of me that kind of just kind of ignores how big halo is you gotta to internalize to, it right <laughs> yeah not not really uh not really think about that as much so but uh, but yeah so actually you know i got the impression uh kind of in a little bit of conversation that we had that you obviously have a history with halo do you want to talk about that Oh yeah, absolutely. I've uh, I've been playing Halo since since CE. Um, nice. I didn't actually play it on my own, so I didn't actually own an original Xbox because you know I was a kid. Uh, but uh, but I did play it on some you know friend stuff and had a fun time. And I played the PC port. I remember still you know putting tons of hours into that because at the time <laughs> I really only played on PC. Right. Um, and uh, and yeah, and I was I was uh, I was in college. From basically, if you were, we were to do it in like Halo years, from like Halo two through Halo, like basically Halo three. So oh, that's right, a pretty okay. formative time of your life. That's a pretty, um, uh, you know, Halo is big at, on college campuses. So yeah. play, play, played 
played played amount. I don't like to say exactly how much because <laughs> it's kind of embarrassing. But <laughs> oh, I bet I, you know. But, I bet you I played about the same actually. <laughs> yes. So, um, but yes, I have played a lot of okay. Halo. So, and I've played almost every ti- every Halo title. So I was I was six years old when Combat Evolved came out. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> really young. Um. Interesting. Uh, so, what's it like working with a team of composers and you know, and Gareth Coker as well? It's awesome. It's great. It's been really, really fun. Um, both uh, both the composers on this project, aside from myself, Joel Cor- Corleitz and uh, Gareth Coker, are just. I mean, I mean, first of all, they they come from a lot more experience in big games than I do. Obviously, right. um, having worked on much bigger titles than I have, so having them there is is really really great. Um, and um, you know, we have a lot of uh, really great support and help from 343 in terms of like okay. making sure we're kind of all together. Um, and uh, and yeah, it's just it's I've had no complaints about it. I, I'm really glad we have those two on the project because it their contributions. I'm ex- I'm excited for everyone to hear them. Of course, um, <laughs> when they put out Garrus track the other day, I was like, just like yes, finally, oh, I can so good talk too. to other people <laughs> about how great he is. Yeah. Um, yeah. So yeah, he's it's yeah, it's just been really, really wonderful, you know. Um, and and they inspire me, and hopefully, hopefully it goes the other way a little bit. Um, but yeah, it's I have no complaints. It's it's um, I'm rambling now, but uh, no, you're it's good. Re- it's really hard to uh, to kind of put into words how just how fun it's been. It's just been really fun. The, so. the community has definitely definitely taken a liking to it. For sure, you can. I don't know if you you pay attention to that too too much. I would stay away from if I were from if I were you. <laughs> but uh, I they, just drop drop in from time to time and a little, little cheeky a little reset thing. era every now and again maybe. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> actually, so something I wanted to mention to you because I kind of mentioned Starbound toward the beginning was um, I actually when I played Starbound first in 2012, like I, I was I was into it super early on because like I, honestly I think just like I had a buddy tell me about this cool game. It's kind of like. Minecraft or like Terraria mixed with Star Wars and Halo and stuff. I'm like, are you kidding me? Absolutely, I'm going to play that. And uh, I picked it up, and within like probably a good hour or two of, of playing the game, I, I, I actually said out loud, and I could find the friend, track him down or something if I, if I could. I specifically said, I want this guy to make the music in Halo. I swear to you that I said that. <laughs> I don't know, maybe someone was listening. Thanks maybe for saying it maybe <laughs> <laughs> but it was uh it's just uh, it just it clicked with me because again I, I get to kind of go back into it it just it's nothing is really quite evocative in the same way as as Marty's music with the exception of, of the soundtrack from Starbound sorry I'm just kind of showering mm-hmm. you with praise here <laughs> oh well that's I mean it's <laughs> how can I complain <laughs> um, yeah no I uh, I uh, I think that um Marty's music and I—I I think that I've definitely been definitely hugely influenced by him, and right. hopefully that that comes out and comes through and stuff. Um, you know, whenever I whenever I'm talking about people who worked on on Halo, you know, Marty and Michael um, Salvatore, um, you know, I also I, I always really worry that people are going to be like, but you didn't mention Kaz or Neil or oh right, um, yeah. Gordy or all these because like so many people have worked on it, so. Um, I'll just take a little moment here to just be sure. like, you know, those people also really influenced me and, and did yeah, really no. great work. And, you know, there's that that phrase, uh, to include is to exclude. And I definitely don't <laughs> want to to do that. So I just want to throw their names out there because they're all fantastic sure, sure. composers as well. No, they're they're great, actually. I liked, like, really liked a lot of pieces in, in Halo 4. And, like, Light, Light is Green in Halo 5 is so good. and uh, It's wonderful. And it's uh, what, is, what is it? Trials is so good in Halo yes. 5 as well. It's just because it kind of... There's something brilliant about how it takes kind of all the cool elements of like the main Halo theme and motifs throughout the years and just kind of lights them on fire. You know what I mean? Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> it's so and cool. it's just done so so skillfully and all the yeah. all the way from the writing all the way through the production of that. It's just it, really uh, it's just really impressive. It felt like a culmination actually of mm-hmm. of of the music it's that had led word. up to that. You think yeah, it's so? yeah, a really good word. Yeah. <laughs> um. If you could do composition for any IP or project, what would it be? Oh, past, that's such a hard question. Man, past or uh, present. Past or present. Well, I mean, I've already done work on Halo, so I feel like <laughs> that box is kind of checked. Um, 
I don't know. I, and this is maybe a cop out and you can call me on it if it is, but I'd be kind of cool to build something new too. Uh, something real big and new. Uh, oh, yeah. Something that no one's ever seen. I mean, and I think that that answer, like I said, kind of comes out from just like, I've kind of gotten to work on my dream IP <laughs> at right, this point. Right. It's, I'm, it's, I've done it now. So um, it'd be kind of cool to do some, some new stuff too. So uh, sure. I, I don't know what, what would I, wow. That's uh <laughs> oh man. We can go back to it if you want me to. I'll, I'll, uh, I'll maybe I'll, uh, have a, have a, have a light bulb moment in a few minutes. We'll maybe. See. <laughs> see how it always goes. Yeah. So, uh, I don't know if you saw Gamer Ghost 51's video kind of talking about Infinite's music, but do you think you could describe why the, the music that we've had, again, in the, those first two trailers, why does it feel like Halo? Um, I just think it, uh, I think we've really taken the idea that feeling like Halo, being evocative in the way that Halo is evocative, is very important to us. That's that's a goal that we have, right? Like that's a specific goal that we have with the music. And I think the way that we've accomplished it is by kind of looking at everything that's come before us um, and and not just paying respect to it and not, it doesn't, it goes more than beyond just using melodic ideas. Uh, it, right. it goes all it goes to every little aspect of it you know i've spent a lot of time submitting music and having um people say you know this is great we really like it but you know it's not feeling like halo to us and here is why and saying like maybe it's too big right like it's very easy for something to be too epic in scope it's very easy for it to be too soaring that's a word that's come up a lot sure. or um um to be too modern right like um it's very easy for it to be too complex. Right. Halo's pretty simple. It, yeah. Uh, that's kind of the, you know, going back to the to the the very first moment you hear music in Halo, right? Like the first time anybody ever turned on Halo CE, they heard a melody by itself. Oh yeah. It didn't have chords even, right? It didn't have huge orchestration. It didn't have um a massive even ensemble right like the monk chant it's like it's a very small ensemble yeah so i think understanding how scope is managed is a huge i is a huge part of that um and i also and it, like i said i think it goes down to a lot of like simplicity doing a lot with a little bit right um not writing stuff that's overly complicated and, and then i think it is that idea of like it's okay for the music to be its own thing you know in working on trailers and stuff you look back at old like halo cinematics or old halo e3 trailers and when you when you look at the way the music and the picture sort of have a relationship and interact they actually don't interact as much as like modern trailers right where right. every single cut is scored every single little like choreographed almost idea that. yeah and not that that's a bad approach that's that's not what i'm saying i'm saying that halo kind of tends to shy away from that and kind of let the music be just kind of music that happens to be playing at the same time as this as this video and again not to say that it doesn't also amplify that video and work with that video and sometimes work with the cuts but it's actually pretty disconnected from it and it gives it this really atmospheric quality i think right um because it's not too overscored um and that was definitely when you were talking about like discover hope trailer like right. that was definitely what we were going for there i mean I can't play it for you, but if I could play for you my <laughs> first take on that, I mean, it's horrendously overscored. It's way too active. It tries to do way too much. And a lot of our process and sort of shaping everything down there was like, what can we cut out? Like, how can right. we, how can we Simplify disconnect and... this from the picture? Right. So do you have a favorite track from the Halo franchise? I am not going to answer this question. And the only reason is, you're composing is that <laughs> the waypoint interviews kind of come out uh they've mentioned that i'm doing one of those things that gareth did and this oh, is sure. one of the questions on there and i want to kind of give them okay fair, you know, fair enough you know, give them this question so <laughs> it will be answered uh when that comes out next week so okay cool cool do you have a favorite video game soundtrack as a whole actually i think i already asked that didn't i no i didn't <laughs> um yes no you asked yeah like what would i like to work into i have a favorite video game soundtrack um a favorite video game soundtrack that's interesting um i mean yeah i mean it, it, it's a boring answer kind of the expected answer of course it's halo like I, like I love halo 3 like and a lot of that has to do with the fact of when i heard it right like right 
I graduated college, moved away from all my friends, and then you know you get up, you boot up Halo Three, and suddenly you're playing with your friends again. Yeah. So of course the music, not well, only for being really good and being really it's beautiful home, and evocative, you know? it's yeah, like yeah, it's, it's like going back to 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 the, that fun time, right? Right, right. So so yeah, I would say Halo Three. Um, have you heard any of the um, the Sea of Thieves kind of? Uh takes on the different soundtracks that they've done like they did one for halo they did one for ori they did one for gears have you heard that i haven't heard what they've done with other soundtracks i have played sea of thieves and heard its soundtrack right uh oh, which so, i love it's so good. <laughs> yeah it's uh I, i'm sorry I, I feel bad i feel like i'm a bad composer here because what i should be doing is saying the name of the person who wrote that and uh really saying that person's fantastic i don't know who it is <laughs> I, unfortunately be i actually so you researched do. it it was uh it's robin beanland i believe is the, is the it is who composed fantastic it. it's so good everywhere and yes. it's implemented perfectly it's oh, beautiful do you play the tall tales um, or anything like that what did you play the tall tales or anything like that uh i have not played a ton of it so i haven't played the tall tales but okay, uh, just like i mean just like dropping into the open world with some friends and like sailing around doing piratey things i was just i remember I, yeah. like they'll tell you that i was sort of having a geek out moment like this is awesome <laughs> <laughs> it's super cool like the little soft strings that kick in when you're kind of cruising across the ocean yeah oh, and so like cool. for all the like little events you know when something attacks you on the ocean or whatever it's yeah, you know, dolly, yeah. It, they all have their own unique sort of little musical sound and the build to doing a skull for it is super cool because it like yeah kinda, it layers in as you get closer and closer ah oh, so cool. yeah it's really good it's really and it, like <laughs> i said it's really well implemented too which yeah i have a lot of respect for because i like i said i don't even do the implementation right I, I hand the stuff over and then I'm just like constantly like, wow, you guys, right. I didn't know you could even take something that I made and do that with it. Like, it's really cool. <laughs> I love, I love clever, clever implementation of music. Like in like the old Banjo-Kazooie games, how they would cut the, the motif would kind of be present throughout the entire mm -hmm. overworld and everything. And it would change as you went around. Super yeah. cool. It's awesome. And especially when people are doing adaptive stuff that is cut up into layers and stuff like, I mean, Again, this is not uh, necessary. This isn't saying that the Starbound audio team is bad by any stretch of the imagination. <laughs> but, but like I, like we were just playing a track, right? Like we right. just play tracks from you know we, we just loop them. Um, it's also but, a smaller uh, to team see, too, you know. Oh yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Well, and I didn't, I didn't give them the assets to be able to chop it all up and <laughs> you know, uh, you know, just play the drums or whatever. Um, right. So like they couldn't if they wanted to. But uh, but yeah, that's uh, that's always that's always very impressive to me, and I think that. Uh, as a composer, I just have nothing but praise for audio editors because their whole job is to make me look good. And <laughs> right, so yeah, well, not only would I never say anything bad, I have nothing bad to say, even if I wanted to, <laughs> even if I was crazy and wanted to say something bad. I don't don't have I mean, I have nothing but praise. So I imagine it was pretty satisfying watching your music coming up on that trailer on the Discovery. Oh, World. yeah, I was actually at the <laughs> briefing and uh, Ooh. Uh, yeah, that was pretty great. Definitely. Okay, so this is this is a bit of a risky question. Okay, but uh, do you plan to continue composing for Halo after Infinite? I mean, I would love to be invited back. I really enjoy working on it. Um, I've worked on my part of this of this particular thing, and uh, it's been a privilege. And if they uh, invite me back, I would love to. Cool, cool. Uh, how does composing for Infinite actually compare to your previous experiences with composing? Uh, it's just very. Everything is just, uh, it's blown up. You know, like I did everything on Starbound. <laughs> I mean, Starbound has no live recordings on it. It's all sampled instruments. Did you do um, Foley for Starbound? I did not. No. That was done by our wonderful sound guy who I'm hoping I can remember his name. Steven, I believe Alexander, if I got that name wrong, I'm sorry. At Armagon, <laughs> I believe. Um, he did all the sound, I believe. Um, I just do music. I don't actually do effects or okay, sound gotcha. stuff. Um, all my training is in music. All my training is in, is in that realm. And, uh, I know in the games industry, there's this like weird thing where the composer sometimes does the sound a la Marty. Right. Yeah. Right. <laughs> uh, but I, I'm that, that to me always, always seemed kind of anomalous. Uh, like if you look at films, right? Like John Williams doesn't do the sound effects. Right. Um, so that's kind of how I always approached it is I want to be good at that one specific part. So right. fair enough. Can you talk about the process of creating a track? Sure. Yeah, I get a brief like a like a here we want music that does this or works in right. this context or works for this scene, and I 
you know, maybe there's some references in there, like, hey, we want it to be like this, or maybe we want this this specific melodic or, you know, Halo idea to be in there at, at this specific point. And I say, okay, great. Um, I work on it in my DAW. I work out of um, Apple's Logic software. I right. make a mock-up with all the sampled orchestral instruments. Um, and then I get feedback, and I get told all the things I'm doing wrong, which is awesome, <laughs> right? Like. It sounds terrible, but it's great because then I get to improve it and then I get to write more music and um, we go back and forth and back and forth until right. everybody's happy with where it's sitting. It gets added to the list of stuff we're going to go record. We record it and um, then the number of people who add their expertise to making the stuff I wrote sound good is mind boggling to me, right? <laughs> There's uh, audio editors and mixers and all sorts of people who touch it and Spend their hard expertise on it and uh then i get like a mix back maybe get to comment on it uh well i get to comment on all of it and usually 99 times out of 100 i'm like hey yeah this amazing person you've had mixed this has done an amazing job <laughs> right <laughs> and uh i think it sounds great and uh so yeah that's kind of the process of creating something and then i don't implement so um, that's, again, our awesome audio team and music team at 343. They'll implement it in the game. So uh, they'll take it and chop it up and make it play back in all the right ways. So so in Infinite at any point, I don't know if you can actually discuss this one either. But again, it's kind try. of a risky one. I'll, do what, I'll say what I can. <laughs> Are you guys using any adaptive music in the game? You know, like different themes for different times of day or dynamic transitions or anything like that? I mean, I can't really talk about specifics right. in terms of how it's implemented, but I mean, yeah, it's got dynamic music, just like a, just like a AAA game. They're 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 hard at work right now, right? Doing that, so cool. I have a question that I'm going to ask you here, and I'm 99% certain that you don't know the answer to this, but I had I had like five people tell me to ask this question. <laughs> so, sure. can you solve the mystery of the puck? Do you know what that means? I don't. Sorry. There's, uh, it, it, again, it, uh, this is because I figured you wouldn't have any idea what this is even, honestly. 343 has kind of systematically released all the, the Foley stuff that they've done. And obviously, since you're not attached to that process, you wouldn't really know a whole lot about it. But people are like, they're latching on to the sounds that this pug makes in, uh, in the, uh, the sound recording sessions. And they're like, it's got to be the flood, right? It's got to be the flood. <laughs> yeah, I, d I don't actually, I mean, I've... Um obviously spoken with and and have met Tajin, the audio director right. um but i don't know i don't see into actual effects at all like i don't i i am just in charge of producing good good music for them so right fair enough so yeah sorry i don't know but that sounds awesome though <laughs> yeah it was really cool i i'm telling people it's a hunter it's not the flood i just have to be contrarian and disagree with people about it but, so here's the last question I have for you, and this is kind of a, a silly one. What do you think about Craig the Brute? I love Craig the Brute. Um, <laughs> I don't know. I, I was surprised more people didn't notice, but uh, somebody made like a song about Craig the Brute. What? Like a, yeah, it's like a, it's like a really catchy melody with some like guitar behind it. You know, Craig the Brute. Um, <laughs> and I actually commented on that. I was like, I can only hope to aspire to this genius um, <laughs> because it's just amazing. It's great. It's fantastic. I'm uh, not, um, not to self plug here, but I'm actually doing a video tomorrow. That's I'm I'm arranging a funeral for Craig the Brute, where we actually <laughs> we pulled a bunch of people into my Discord VoIP together. We had 46 people in one VoIP call, and we all kind of like we 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 we, uh, we did a, we all did eulogies for 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 Craig the Brute and everything. But not only that, so I, I put that together and we like kind of went into Halo Reach and did some machinimating for it. But I went on to Cameo and I paid Steve down $67 to apologize for killing Steve to get Craig the Brute. <laughs> That's fantastic. <laughs> uh, That's fantastic. I can't wait to see how that goes over. Well, that was uh, a lot of fun. Yeah, that yeah, was great. That was super cool. And uh, before before I mean before you stop the recording, just wanted to say thank you for all your kind words and your other videos on on uh, uh, possible upcoming music and stuff that you've done. Uh, that was very nice. So I did see that, and I was oh thank very you very grateful. So. <laughs> well, I appreciate you taking a look. Actually, uh, well, yeah, that that about wraps that up, guys. So thank you guys so much for watching the video. Uh, I hope you guys enjoyed this. Absolutely. Hey, so this is me post-mortem talking to you guys. I hope you guys thoroughly enjoyed this. 
Um, again, it was so much fun to do. I really would like to do stuff like this going forward. So just let me know what you guys thought of this uh, and how cringe my uh, interviewing abilities were and, and, and such. Uh, I'd love to get some like some real solid feedback on how I did here and things I could do to improve. Legitimate, you know, like I, I'm willing to hear some criticism on this and I really want to because I definitely do want to do stuff like this in the future. Guys, I want to actually take a moment to again just really thank you guys because like what's happened this past month or two has really just been so incredible i never really i, I never really thought anything like this would have ever truly happened i didn't and i don't want to be the kind of person who gets away from that and doesn't understand that you know you guys could just decide not to show up one day and you know i would be nothing i i'm nothing without you guys you guys are what i do this for and that's another reason why we have that discord is because i do like to interact with the community and i'm always chatting up with people in there and we're always trying to interact with them sometimes we could do a little bit of a better job but that's a big part of it i know i'm kind of plugging my discord here but i, I do want to thank you guys really it does mean so much to me uh how much you guys just how passionate you guys are and how consistent you guys are and how much you guys want to take part and and how much we you know we, we want to do that as much as possible um i want to give a shout out to my patreon supporters here uh really it, it, this is crazy we have nine people who are supporting me on patreon now and i i can't thank you guys so much enough sticks you've got the five dollar tier thank you so much sticks he's actually a moderator over our server we've got Tease over here. He is also one of our uh, moderators as well, and he is on the $10 tier. Ryan McCann as well with the $10 tier. Uh, we've got Ghost Warrior 448 at the $5 tier. We've got Screamy here at the $10 tier as well. We've got Reclaimer with the $5 tier. We've got Rye with the $10 tier as well. He actually, uh, I played some customs with him today. He was in the community night. Uh, Anthony Barry, we've got you here as well for the $5 tier. Actually, Rai, real quick, I should mention, you are on the $12 tier. You're an absolute legend. Uh, Anthony, with the $5 tier, thank you so much, Anthony. I really appreciate that. And Colton, uh, you know, Colton Pack, of course. Again, the original dude, the first guy to support me on Patreon. You are so awesome, and all of you guys, just really, really cool, and this is all a dream come true. It really, really kind of is, you know? I never, never expected this, and it's it's humbling. It really is. I don't I, I don't want to sound canned and, and corporate or anything like that, but, guys, it really, sometimes I have to take moments where I kind of step back from it and just go, whoa, like, this is all real. This is actually real. You guys come to this stuff consistently. And we have this really cool community built up. And I just, I can't thank you guys enough for that. Now, just as a heads up here, we are going to be doing community night on Wednesday this week. And I think going forward, we're actually going to start doing our community nights on Wednesdays. It gives me a little bit more time to breathe with the videos. So I don't have to spread the days out throughout the week. What was happening before, was, in all honesty, was I was getting to Friday. And if there was ever a period of time where I had like writer's block or anything like that, when Friday came... It was kind of troublesome because I knew I had, generally speaking, I want to have videos uploaded about two days before they actually air, just so you guys can kind of have some time to sync in and see them and be like, oh, okay, so this is coming up in a couple of days, so I'll just have to remember that. But uh, when I don't manage to pull that off, I feel like it doesn't sit as well, and you guys don't, uh, it's maybe not as easy to catch. So I generally want to get it done pretty early. But what happens on Fridays is if I have community night on Friday and then I have to do the video, sometimes I'm not there. Sometimes I don't have it completely ready and, and good to go. I'm kind of rambling on about, about some stuff here, a little bit incoherently. I'll kind of wrap this up a little bit. It's 4.30 in the morning and I'm really tired. Leave me alone, please. No, I love you. Don't leave me, actually. Please, never leave me. Anyway, uh... <laughs> Well, you guys, that, that, that's pretty much it. Yeah, Community Night Wednesday. Uh, thank you, Patreon supporters. Thank you, everyone, honestly, for consistently showing up and watching these videos. Uh, I'm glad you guys get something out of it, and I'm glad that you guys are so positive about it and that we've created this really cool community together. Thank you, guys. Bye-bye.